Well, thank you. It, it's taken a long time since I grew up to, to get here and to uh, receive such wonderful symbols of the key, my hometown, that opened opportunities for me. So if I can turn this key, I will try and open up opportunities for all of you young kids also. I want you to know that, is this not? Oh, you got to eat it. Huh? All right, I think this one is better. Yes, you're right. But, but I don't need your notes. I want you to know I'm a cool cat. I got two, two phones. And uh, I got somebody that tweets for me. <laughs> you want to know what my uh, Twitter call sign is? Yeah. Twitter at the real buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Not that Toy Story cat. <laughs> his, you know what his first name was? It was Lunar Larry. <laughs> I think they uh, settled on a slightly better name. <laughs> Flying in here to uh, Newark Airport uh, reminded me just of so many memories. Newark Airport is, uh, was managed by my father for a period of time. My aunt was um, one of the first stewardesses for Eastern Airlines. She didn't stay in that job very long because she married the uh, general traffic manager and settled into Miami. Uh, I uh, remember a lot of memories here. The principal, I'm looking at his, was uh, Harold Ferguson when, when I was here going through high school. And he had uh, uh, Dick Ferguson and uh, was, was uh, one of his sons. And it was through that connection that I went to a summer camp in Maine where I uh, have many of my very fond memories of instilling the competitive spirit. I know that a lot of folks here uh, have received that. I see uh, uh, a scout leader over there, and uh, it's that kind of leadership that I think uh, I began to learn here in, in the summer camp and through competitive uh, athletics. I uh, have not too good a memory of where I was yesterday, but uh, I want to tell you I do have uh, a, a little memory jogger that I, I recite from time to time. Uh, I'm not much of a musician, but I remember doing a rap song with Snoop Dogg. <laughs> and of course I don't dance, even though uh, they put me out there dancing with the stars. <laughs> now I want to take you back for just a moment to uh, when I was growing up as a uh, teenager even before that. As I say, I wasn't much of a musician, but I tried to play the clarinet. And I had an instructor from Artie Shaw's band who was trying to teach me the clarinet. So I don't know who remembers who Artie Shaw or Benny Goodman or any of those people. Now, I had an assignment, I think in junior high school, maybe yeah, middle school, to write a poem. Now, I'm not much of a poet either, but I uh, told this story to my uh, clarinet teacher, and he says, I'll help you out. And so he gave me a poem that takes back to the early days of World War II, let's say, uh, 40, 1942. Uh, we were a little concerned that there might be uh, enemy aircraft 
And I remember we built models of enemy aircraft and painted them black so that the, the spotters could see them. So the poem is a little bit like that. I heard the sirens the other night. The signal meant turn out your light. The enemy is in the sky, your shining light he'd like to spy. But if we're blacked out down below, then he won't know just where to go. But if we're not, then he can see to drop his bombs on you and me. I, I have another uh, memory of the high school of uh, graduation and the yearbook. Back then, it may still be called uh, the amphitheater, right? Well, you know, you got your picture in there and you pass it around to other people and they sign uh, underneath their picture. There was a real smart guy in our class, Winston Markey. He was the valedictorian of the class. He went direct to MIT even though uh, I had a scholarship uh, to MIT, I chose not to go there, but to the military academy. Now, in my yearbook, there was a picture of uh, Winston Markey. And you know, they print a little saying uh, underneath it. And believe it or not, in uh, 1947, the little, s it mentioned MI going to MIT, and then it said, uh, rockets to the moon. <laughs> OK, this is 1947. So he wrote under his name, I'll build them, you fly them. Remember Apollo 11 and the crew, Neil Armstrong, Mike Collins, and myself. It's a shame that uh, Neil can't be here with us, and it's also a shame that my sister, uh, who loved Montclair so much, She's between Maddie as the older sister, it's the younger older sister. <laughs> and, and they were the ones that preceded me through the school system here. And uh, they weren't sure when I came along whether I was really up to the standards that uh, these two <laughs> older sisters. But my mother went and talked to the teachers uh, and said, Okay, he's going to the ninth grade now. It's going to start counting. And, uh, <laughs> if, if you remember, Manny, it was about the ninth grade that I began to be bringing home A's and occasional B. But it was probably because I knew the principal, Harold Ferguson. <laughs> we had fraternities and sororities in the high school back then. They were against the law. <laughs> and, and of course, that put us in kind of uh, a conflict of interest, knowing the principal, Harold Ferguson, who lived on the same street that I did, Princeton Place, right next to Anderson Park. And that wasn't Clary Anderson, I don't think. He was of a, a much <laughs> later generation. I feel that I have just been so blessed in my life. My mother was born in Freedom, Illinois, in 1903, the year that the Wright brothers first flew. And my father was a pioneer in early aviation, and he knew all those early guys, Jimmy Doolittle and Howard Hughes, and, and he managed, well, let's see how, how you 
if I na do a little bit of name dropping. He grew up in Worcester, Massachusetts and went to Clark University. And his physics professor was my father. His physics professor was Robert Goddard. Now, he went to Worcester Polytech for his master's, went to MIT, uh, didn't, didn't quite finish. Uh, uh, but he got drafted somehow in the Coast Artillery. He didn't like that assignment, so he transferred to the Signal Corps. That, that's the core. That's the part of the Army that uh, sent signals, but they used airplanes uh, after they got rid of all the pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> so his first assignment now was in the Philippines as an aide to Billy Mitchell. Uh-huh. Now you can tell the kids who these people were. He got court-martialed because he showed the Navy how you could sink a battleship, not by flying over like that, but by dive bombing. And dive bombing, of course, was such uh, a successful maneuver during uh, World War II. I can remember one of my early days shaving when uh, the invasion took place uh, on Normandy, June 6th, 1944. I, I can also remember earlier than that uh, an airship, an airship that went from Lakehurst, New Jersey, over to Germany where it was built. My father flew on the Hindenburg from Lakehurst over to Germany, probably a few years before it flew to Lakehurst and burst into flames uh, as probably one of the most spectacular uh, events that, uh, that I remember in, in my childhood. As I grew a little older, why I remembered that one of those very aviation pioneers, Jimmy Doolittle, bombed Tokyo four months after the beginning of the war. You, you kids need to learn a little bit about history, because I remember in, in high school, uh, there were some veterans who uh, had been in World War II, and they came back and were in our, in our classes. I'm wearing a uh, wounded warrior's pin. I'm very interested, very imbued, very indoctrinated into the military, uh, having been at West Point. Duty, honor, country means a lot to me. So do veterans from all the wars. And that's why I'm involved in uh, a uh, law that was passed in 2008 that suggested, allowed, didn't order, but suggested that veterans during the Star Spangled Banner at uh, ceremonies inside or outside, instead of doing this, should hand salute. Well, I'm trying to get that word across, not just to veterans, but to other people who will be at sporting events or whatever there, and, and see who the people are who, who served this country. Uh, I'm very disturbed by the suicide rate that uh, exists. Uh, 22 veterans a day have been committing suicide. We're not taking very good care, and I'm trying to help in this post-traumatic stress syndrome. Uh, I. Uh, myself have had uh, periods of uh, depression that were fairly serious. I inherited my grandfather, committed suicide, an army chaplain, my mother committed suicide the year before I went to the moon. So I've had to deal with that and of course it led to other uh, obstacles in, uh, in my history and I uh, in the area of uh, alcoholism, 
and I now have 34 years of sobriety. Yeah. 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 football here at Montclair High, my sophomore year. Uh, and, uh, couldn't, couldn't throw a pass very well. Anybody was watching the Dodger game last Saturday or Sunday, whatever? Day, Memorial Day. Memorial Day. I got to throw the pitch out. Woo! Uh, yeah, it, it, it didn't make home plate. <laughs> I saw it. it, it <laughs> and, but I was so in, uh, impressed by the need for ac academics my junior year here that I didn't go out for the football team. Bad mistake. I uh, recognized that the first game I was sitting in the stands watching, watching the Mounties play, whoever it was. So my senior year, I went out for football, but I was a pole vaulter, and I didn't want to be too heavy going over the bar. So I was one of those dynamic athletes selected to be at the center of the Mountie team. A 165-pound dynamo. There, there was one guy who was even lighter than that on our team, Joe Andalino, I think it was. But we were undefeated, untied state champs. I will always be so grateful that things worked out with my education at West Point. MIT, uh, combat experiences that led me to develop uh, methods of bringing spacecraft together in space, and that is what opened the door for me to get into the astronaut program, and uh, I was in the right place again at the right time. Uh, I, I sorely miss one of those uh, three astronauts that were mentioned. Uh, as having been killed in 1967 in the Apollo 1 fire. Ed White was a very, very close friend of mine. He got me into a fighter squadron uh, that uh, we still have uh, reunions uh, today with that fighter squadron in Germany. We were both on the track team, and uh, so he was the one person that I knew in the astronaut group. Well, we both applied in 62, but they picked him because He'd been through test pilot training, but I hadn't. So uh, I had to wait for them to change the rules the next year. And I could have capped off my career by having gone to the moon and retired to play golf. But I found out I was no good at golf. <laughs> And I didn't want to join a company that didn't get a good contract, so uh, so I was sort of on my own, and I began to experiment with uh, things, and I just got impressed with trying to make this country, again, a leader in space. So not only have I had the, the opportunity to be involved in one of the greatest experiences uh, that this country uh, could have ever given to a few very lucky and fortunate people. But I haven't stopped, and, and I am very dedicated, as you'll see in, uh, in the recent book that I wrote, uh, Mission to Mars, in, in trying to repeat again the commitment to the future that President Kennedy did within one decade to land a man on the moon. I think we're going to need two decades. Now, when are we going to make this commitment? 
not today, probably not in the next couple of years, but how about the 50th anniversary of this country's landings yeah. on the moon? Yeah. Yeah. I, I see that you're thinking the same way that I did when I was here. Yeah, that's a good time. It's uh, right around the re-election year of 2020. So that makes it a little bit contentious. And you can rest assured that, that I'm going to be pulling all the little strings that I possibly can so that a world leader, a president, will say the words similar to, I believe that this nation should commit itself before two decades are out to American-led international permanence on the planet Mars, a growing settlement of human beings on another planet. And if you don't think that's going to be historic, now it's my job to convince somebody in the White House that, that that's a worthy uh, legacy for them to inherit. All they got to do is follow my instructions. <laughs> and to see my name hanging around uh, on, on banners. It's unbelievable. It really is. And uh, I, I just feel so kind of choked up with emotion about being so lucky in my life. A lot of people helped. A lot of people were teachers along the way. And I listened to them yeah. most of the time. <laughs> But that's what led me uh, down the path of uh, success and opened up opportunities. And, and I am not going to stop trying harder and harder to make sure that we open those doors to be a two-planet species of humans, not just hundreds of thousands of years on, on this planet, but starting to raise a settlement, a colony, on the planet Mars. That's my objective. So, you watch. Thank you very much.